Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us have taken a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, 
I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. So this uh, reading on this fifth Sunday of Lent is from the uh, Gospel of John. And again, uh, third, fourth, and fifth Sundays of Lent are significant. Uh, They uh, kind of tell us uh, a summary of Lent. Um, And uh, that summary is pretty much uh, a summary of of the season of Lent, if you will. Uh, If you look at the woman at the well and the man born blind, and then today's reading on uh, Lazarus, you have repentance you have enlightenment and fullness of life. So essentially that is what uh, we're looking at, especially it all leads to or culminates in uh, the fullness of life. Uh, When you look at the entire Gospel of John, there are basically seven signs in the Gospel of John. When you look at uh, the whole Gospel, you go all the way back to the water water being changed into wine at Cana. It's the first sign. And the healing of the royal official's son in Capernaum, the healing of the paralytic at the Bethesda pool, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus walking on water, the healing of the man born blind, and then today's raising of Lazarus from the Uh, uh, from death. So these seven signs are meant to stir faith in Jesus as the resurrection and the life. And that is the main point of, of our faith is to truly believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He's the one that is the life giver. He's the one that takes care of everything for us. And especially in this time of the coronavirus, we have this challenge before us set Do we believe that Jesus will be taking care of us, that Jesus will be taking care of these things? And so this is that that same question that is kind of uh, the underlying uh, question throughout this gospel. Uh, Do you believe? Do you believe this? Uh, So these seven signs, uh, the raising of Lazarus, it reveals plainly this fact that that this faith in Jesus as the resurrection of life is so important. Um, So Jesus here, he recomposes a decomposing body. Uh, that is of Lazarus. So the raising of Lazarus is this final and clearest sign that Jesus is the one who gives life, that he is the Son of God, that he reveals God's glory, and that Jesus is offering this eternal life to all. So this glory of God that Martha will see, if she believes, means we, we are all being offered this new life different from our human condition of original sin and freedom from personal sin. So this offer of Jesus, it's this offer of new life. It's this offer of peace, of joy, of love that is uh, to replace our old lives, if you will, of anxiety, of worry, of division. And if we believe in Jesus as this giver of new life, then we too will see the glory of God. Our lives transformed, that will be the glory of God. And so then we always have these greater opportunities. If you, if you think about this transformation of life, we're talking about a great change in our lives, sure. Uh, but there's something even more at a greater depth there, that we are advancing in the spiritual life, that we're advancing in this intimacy with our Lord God, that we are being coming closer and closer to him, that our lives are being transformed, that we are being more and more converted from our, from our sin, from our old life, and the ways in which we used to think. So we come closer and closer to uh, the way in which God thinks. So in any trial or suffering or grief, which is especially underlined here with the death of Lazarus, an active, firm faith in Jesus as the resurrection and the life enables us to transform our lives. 
And so then again, we're, we're met again with this, with this theme of faith. It's how we started this, this homily. It was about how these seven signs of the Gospel of John are meant to stir that faith in Jesus as the resurrection and life. Now, do we really believe that? And if we do, how does that impact our lives? So this faith, it allows us to experience the glory of God. And so then in this gospel context, this glory of God is seen in Jesus' uh, Jesus powerfully, powerfully raising Lazarus from death. Uh, that is the great glory of God for these people in the gospel context at this time. What is seeing the glory of God for us? Well, it depends on our faith. It depends on how much we really truly believe in the Lord God. So that is uh, one of the things we want to look at. It's actually the main thing we want to look at is our faith. How is your faith? How is our faith? And we can see actually uh, four different lessons on faith in this gospel context. So this first lesson that we see uh, is the delay. Faith when God does not seem to act. Sure, we've all been in uh, experience where we feel like God is not acting. There's probably many in our world today who are believing in regard to this coronavirus epidemic, uh, pandemic rather, uh, that, uh, that God is not acting. Why doesn't God act? And so then this is what we see right away in this first part is that there's this delay that Jesus does, uh, that he, he waits to go to see Lazarus. It's a faith when God does not seem to act. So Jesus' delay it leads to greater blessings, all right? That might, that might come as a little bit of an awkward or a counterintuitive thought, but his delay leads to greater blessings. Uh, it, le- it leads to the life and faith for all those witnesses. If you remember by the end of the gospel, there's all these other witnesses that saw this raising of Lazarus and many of those Jews came to believe. Ultimately, the faith that believes that leads us to eternal life is what we want. That's the kind of faith we want. That's the whole point is to get us to salvation. That's what faith essentially does is it saves us. So Jesus, he intentionally waits two days before leaving from where he is, uh, which is shocking to Martha and Mary as is proven uh, by the remarks. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. He not only hears it from Martha, he also hears it from Mary as well. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So God's love does not always feel like love. But God's love is always the best for our lives. That's difficult for us to understand. That's why this first lesson on faith is in regards to this delay, that God's love does not always feel like love, but God's love is always the best for our lives. Um, And so that's where that faith has to supply for us. The second lesson is Thomas. Uh, Faith as an unwavering loyalty to Jesus. Uh, When we look at Thomas, uh, we learn to trust in God and his will, uh, receiving our direction from him instead of from our present circumstances. Uh, A lot of times we get caught up in the moment. We get caught up in uh, the present circumstances. I need to react this way. I need to do this. I need to respond in this regard. But we, we should be going to prayer first, not last. Uh, And so then uh, we learn to trust in God and his will, receiving our direction from him instead of from our present circumstances. So Thomas looks to Jesus. Jesus is a marked man, and the Jews are seeking to kill him, but Lazarus' sisters are calling him back to Judea. So in doubting Thomas, if you will, we see a faith displayed as loyal Thomas, who wishes to also go to die with Lazarus. Let us also go and die with him. So while Thomas is aware of the dangers in going back to Judea and is willing to die, he still does not quite understand what Jesus is saying. So Thomas is willing to stick with Jesus no matter what may come. And that's important for us, too, to realize that um, what Thomas realizes is that he knows who Jesus is. So Thomas is not following Jesus because he sees how everything fits together or makes sense. He's following out of a loyalty to Jesus himself. He's, uh, he has a trusting attachment to Jesus, which is true discipleship, that we attach ourselves to the person of Jesus for who he is. So this is the, the, what Thomas understands is that he has placed his faith in Jesus as the Son of God, so he believes what Jesus says, and he sticks with him, uh, even when he does not understand. 
Okay, so here we have this faith that uh, does not understand, but eventually will. And this is the thing with Thomas is that he doesn't understand. Uh, he has faith, and he doesn't need to understand because he believes in Jesus for who he is. Our faith should be the kind that attaches ourselves to trust in Jesus no matter what. Now, uh, Martha is the third lesson on faith, and it's kind of similar uh, to Thomas, but not the same. So when faith in God is weak, then we have an opportunity to trust in his love. So this is the difference between Thomas and Martha. Martha, um, though God may appear uncaring or absent, definitely Martha feels this way, uh, trusting in his love for us will get us through anything, including grief and death. So when we look at Martha, her faith says that God will give Jesus whatever he asks of him, meaning that Martha sees Jesus as an intermediary who is heard by God, but not God himself. And so that's the difference between uh, Thomas and Martha, is that Thomas knows who Jesus is, and doesn't understand, Martha knows that Jesus loves her. And so because of the experience that her and her sister and Lazarus has, have had uh, with Jesus, then she trusts in the love uh, that Jesus has for her. So Martha's view of Jesus and Martha's faith in Jesus is actually defective in that she sees Jesus as this intermediary and not the resurrection and the life himself. She doesn't quite put that together that he is. That's why he says, I am the resurrection life. Do you believe this? Did I not tell you that you would see the glory of God? And so he's trying to uh, get her to understand that still. Uh, but Martha's faith is one that always trusted in Jesus' love for her. Again, so the difference between Thomas and Martha is that Thomas trusts in who Jesus is because he does know who Jesus is. He believes who Jesus is. Uh, the identity of Jesus. But Martha still doesn't have that identity down, uh, yet she trusts in his love for her. So Martha does not fully understand what Jesus is revealing about his identity as being the resurrection himself, but she too sticks with Jesus. The thing about faith is that it creates communion with Jesus, which allows uh, believers to receive life. Again, the uh, whole Gospel of John is leading up to this fullness of life in Jesus Christ, Jesus as the life giver. And we have to have faith in him in it, in it to enable us to receive his life. The fourth lesson and uh, final lesson is to invite Jesus to see our pain, which will move him to heal us. So a uh, better translation here is that uh, you see Jesus twice here. Uh, he becomes uh, angry in spirit and very agitated. The word there used is uh, perturbed. Uh, he's angry in spirit and very agitated at death, okay? And the reign of terror that it exercises over us, even though to him, death is only sleeping. I'm gonna go awaken Lazarus, remember? So he still believes that, of course, or he doesn't believe, he knows that for Jesus, because he is the resurrection of life, he, has, he, is, the, he is the author of life and death. So for him, Lazarus is sleeping, but that's different. What he does with Lazarus, just as an underlying point here, what he does with Lazarus is a little bit different than what he actually does in our glorified state. That's going to be different. The resurrection is a, a lot different than what he does with Lazarus. With Lazarus in this gospel, he just brings, him, brings a, a, a decomposing body back to life. All right, but for the resurrection, that's a difference. So we don't want to get we don't want to get confused at, on that. Uh, the glory of God is much more, much greater than just coming back to life as we know it. Uh, so Jesus, he hates death and he hates our suffering from it. Uh, that he sheds tears at their invitation to come and see where they've laid him is proof of that. And so Jesus does understand and he empathizes with our. Uh, with our suffering and our grief at the loss of people that we love, uh, loss of our loved ones. So uh, he does experience grief in his humanity or his human, his human uh, nature. Inviting Jesus to see our pain, it moves him to heal us and restore us to life. He doesn't want us to suffer, but if we show him our pain, like going back to the woman at the well, when the woman at the well was honest, then she was uh, able to become enlightened and have faith in him and eventually receive uh, his life. 
because of her faith. So faith in Jesus as the life giver enables us to receive new and transformed life, which is, of course, participation in the resurrection uh, here and now. So we have these four lessons on faith. Uh, The first lesson is that delay, faith when God does not seem to act. That second one is Thomas, faith as an unwavering loyalty uh, to Jesus or trust in Jesus. And the third lesson there was Martha, when faith in God is weak, then trust in his love. And finally, uh, the fourth one uh, is to show Jesus our pain, uh, which will move him to heal us and restore us to fullness of life. So again, in summary, repentance, Uh, with the woman at the well. Uh, That leads to enlightenment with the uh, healing of the man born blind, which leads to fullness of life uh, in today's reading with the raising of Lazarus. So we have that beautiful summary in the Gospel of John. All of these signs in the Gospel of John are meant to stir our faith in the resurrection, which is even closer now as this is the fifth Sunday of Lent. And so we are headed towards that Easter celebration of the resurrection. It is what we hope for, is what we want to participate in. It is the fullness of life. And uh, that is, of course, in Jesus. By our faith in Jesus, we are able to uh, apprehend for ourselves this life of God, that we are able to attain by our faith this life of God, which he has in store for us. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We know that God, our Heavenly Father, hears and answers all of our prayers, and so we make those prayers known to him. We pray for the church. We pray for the public authorities. We pray for the eternal salvation of the world. We pray for all the sick or ill, those who suffer or struggle in any way. We pray for all the souls in purgatory, all those who've died and all those who will die today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, our human weakness lays claim to your power, your majesty, your mercy, and your forgiveness. We ask that you hear all these prayers and grant them and all your graces to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands may come for us, the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands we come, our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name. Good, good for all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Christopher, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Alan our bishop, his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your, one, your generous gift through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. <clears throat>